We've spent a couple videos looking at the notion of continuity of functions of real numbers. Now we're ready to look at the notion of uniform continuity, which is a strengthened version of continuity. Before we do that, let's recall the definition of continuity. But this definition extended to continuity on a set instead of at a point. So we say that f from a to r, where a is a subset of real numbers, is continuous on capital A. So by continuous on capital A, I mean continuous at every point of capital A. If for all a in a and epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a delta, and I've put a subscript down here to mention that delta depends on epsilon as usual, but it also depends on a bigger than zero, such that if x minus a is less than delta, those are in absolute values, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon. So the really important thing to notice here is that this delta is going to depend on the choice of epsilon, which is challenged to you, and whatever your point you're working at. So if I'm trying to show continuity at maybe the point seven, maybe it's important that that delta take into account that I'm working at the point seven versus at the point one. So now let's contrast that with the definition of uniform continuity. So we say that f from a to r is uniformly continuous on a if for all epsilon bigger than zero there is a delta bigger than zero such that for all little a in a if absolute value of x minus a is less than delta then absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon. And notice there's been an exchange in the order of quantifiers here. Up here, we said for all a in a and epsilon bigger than zero, there is this delta. And since the existence of delta occurred after we said for all a and epsilon, that delta is allowed to depend on a and epsilon. But now, all we have right here is the for all epsilon before the existence of this delta. So that means this delta is only allowed to depend on epsilon. This delta is brought into existence before we even talk about what point we're checking continuity at. So in other words, up here, the delta may depend on the point, but down here, the, belt, the delta does not depend on a point. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at an example and then maybe also look at a non-example. So we're going to show that f of x equals 3x plus 2 is uniformly continuous on R. We're going to work this like via scratch work and then writing the proof. And so generally the scratch work is in reverse and then writing the proof we kind of reverse that back into the forward direction. So we've done this for a bunch of types of proofs. This is a pretty standard method in um, a basic analysis class like this. Okay, so uh, like I said, scratch work. In other words, we're going to start with our goal in inequality, which is f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon, keeping in mind that here we're taking some arbitrary point a, which is a real number. Now we're going to go ahead and insert our function. So here we have 3x plus 2 minus 3a plus 2 is less than epsilon. <clears throat> But now that is going to all simplify down to 3 times the quantity x minus a is less than epsilon, which means x minus a must be less than epsilon over 3. So now if we look at this, we see that this choice of delta doesn't have an a in it anywhere. And so we can choose a delta which only depends on epsilon, does not depend on a. And you might say, well, there's an a in this inequality in the x minus a part. But look, that's like part of this like goal set up from this if then statement that's at the end of the definition of uniform continuity. So that's OK. It's just we can't have dependence on an a on this right hand side of the inequality. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, we're ready to write the proof of the uniform continuity of 3x plus 2. So let's say that we are given some epsilon bigger than 0. We're going to take delta to be equal to epsilon over 3, and that's based on our calculation over there. And now observe that for all a in the real numbers, 
if absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, which equals epsilon over three, then we can build that inequality up to the inequality f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is equivalent to saying absolute value of three x minus three a is less than epsilon, which now we can add and subtract two to the inside of that absolute value. That'll give us absolute value of three x plus two minus 3a plus 2 is less than epsilon, but that's exactly what we need it to be. That's the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon. So let's go ahead and notice that everything works. Notice that we have epsilon bigger than 0, and then we've taken delta to be epsilon over 3. And after taking delta to be epsilon over 3, we've noticed that for all real numbers a, we have this, with, we have this statement implies this statement, which is exactly what we need in order to have uniform continuity. The important thing here is we bring this delta into existence before taking an arbitrary real number. That's the most important part about this uniform continuity. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, then we're gonna explore another function. Now we're ready to look at another example of a function which will end up being not uniformly continuous. So it is continuous, but not uniformly continuous. And so that's what I've got up here as my question. So is f of x equals x cubed uniformly continuous on R? And here I'm gonna prove that it is continuous. So f of x is continuous on R, but not uniformly continuous, but we're not gonna prove this in this claim. We'll actually need a little bit more machinery in order to prove that it's not uniformly continuous. So again, we're just gonna prove here that it is continuous. And in the calculation where we prove this thing is continuous, we will see a hint towards it being not uniformly continuous. So now as is kind of standard, we're gonna start over there with scratch work, work it in reverse, and then reorder that into our careful proof that we have continuity on all of R. So in other words, continuity at every A in R. So let's say our goal is to start and look at the inequality f of x minus f of A, absolute values less than epsilon. And we should be able to reduce that down here to x minus a is less than delta, where that delta is gonna depend on epsilon and a. Then, like I said, we'll reverse all of those calculations up here. So let's see where this starts us. So this looks absolute value of x cubed minus a cubed is less than epsilon. But now that's just screaming to factor it, and we can do that. We'll get the absolute value of x minus a times the absolute value of x squared plus ax plus a squared less than epsilon. So if we look at this, absolute value of x minus a is like our goal thing that we want to get by itself on the left-hand side. But now this thing right here, this absolute value of x squared plus ax plus a squared is something that we want to get a handle on. So in other words, if we can bound that, then we're probably okay. And we're going to use a strategy that we've used in the past, which is start with a test value of delta, which is kind of large, and then see what it would take with that test value of delta, and then in the proof we'll take some sort of minimum argument. So let's say what if delta equals one, so that means that the absolute value of x minus a is less than one. And that gives us actually two helpful pieces of information. So first of all, it tells us that x is between a minus one and a plus one. So that's just changing that absolute value inequality to a compound inequality. Then also by squaring this, it tells us that x squared minus 2ax plus a squared is less than 1. And we actually know that that's positive as well. Because we're squaring something, we'll always get something that is bigger than or equal to 0, I guess I should say. Great. Now what we want to do is somehow put these two inequalities together so that we get something that looks like this. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Notice that we can multiply this by 3a and add it to this and we'll get something in the middle that looks exactly like what we have uh, boxed in yellow. So let's maybe do this. This is going to be 3ax is less than or equal to 3a squared plus 3a. So again, what I did is I just multiplied this by 3a, which means I need to multiply this by 3a as well. And then over here, I'm going to have 3a squared minus 3a. Now, if I just add straight down, I've got this nice inequality. So over here, I have 3a squared minus 3a is less than or equal to x squared plus ax plus a squared, which is less than or equal to, now we have 3a squared plus 3a plus 1. Now the next thing that we'll do is take the absolute value of this and as we do that, apply the triangle inequality. So taking the absolute value and applying the triangle inequality will give us x squared plus ax plus a squared in absolute values is less than or equal to 3a squared, so notice no need of an absolute value there, plus 3 times the absolute value of a plus 1. Great. And so now notice you have to be careful about what's happening over here in this left hand side and this right hand side, but all of that is covered by the triangle inequality and then by putting that absolute value of a there. Great. So now what we notice is we've taken this stuff that has to do with x and bound it only by stuff that has to do with a, which is good because we can input this guy right here into the inequality that was up a couple of steps above and divide by it, and we'll see that we end up with x minus a is less than epsilon over all of this stuff. So 3a squared plus 3 times the absolute value of a plus 1. And so that's what we can take as our value of delta. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and write the argument in the forward direction. So let's say that we are given epsilon bigger than 0 and a, which is a real number, so the next thing that we want to do is take delta to be equal to the minimum of these two values. So 1 is one of the values. And this weird epsilon over 3a squared plus 3 absolute value of a plus 1 is the other value. Now we're going to notice that if absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then we have two things happening at the same time. Absolute value of x minus a is less than 1, and absolute value of x minus a is less than this epsilon over 3a squared plus 3, absolute value of a plus 1. Great. But now what we can do is combine these two conditions together while reversing these calculations. So I'll leave it to you guys to reverse those calculations carefully and end up at the end with the absolute value of x cubed minus a cubed is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show to have f of x be continuous, not uniformly continuous on all of r. So let's notice what we've got going on here. So we've got this thing is continuous on all of R, but perhaps the delta depends on whatever point you're testing the continuity at. So perhaps this is not uniformly continuous. So we're not going to do this in this video, but in the next video we'll carefully look at the condition for something to be uniformly continuous or not uniformly continuous, and we'll have a test for not uniformly continuous. And that's a good place to stop.